Hi, if you're joining us for the first time, my name is Rob, and I want to tell you how solo travel changed my life. My solo travel adventures, it was the fuse that I lit that got me to the point where I now live in Cagayan de Oro in northern Mindanao, Philippines, engaged to a 30-year-old Filipina fiancé, living my best life, a new life, a journey that began with taking the first step, that scary step, of solo traveling the world. I'm going to tell you my story, how I ended up in the Philippines with a 30-year-old Filipina fiancé. And I'm going to share with you some of my tips and hacks in terms of gear, how to save money, the best way to travel solo, how to make the most of meeting friends, and having dating relationships. I've been solo traveling for five years. I've circumnavigated the globe twice in the last five years and visited over 50 countries. Now, I had traveled for business my whole life. I worked for three years doing international travel, traveling the world, primarily by myself going off to see clients. But when the opportunity to travel solo for recreational travel came around, I was scared. I didn't want to do it. I don't think I'm an introvert and I wasn't sure if I wanted to do it. I put it off at first. I had retired at age 62 and I was in a long-term relationship with a woman who was very close to my age. Five years ago, my story begins. I took my first recreational solo travel trip. My first stop was very informative for me. I learned something. I landed in Iceland and I had booked a full day excursion and the weather was just terrible and there were 50 mile an hour winds and the entire country shut down for tourist excursions and about 40 of us were in the lobby of this boutique hotel and we spent the entire day socializing and getting to know one another and telling travel stories and I really really enjoyed myself and I thought wow this first day of solo travel is just uh, not bad at all but then I uh, continued on my journeys and I spent the next uh, 15 days traveling by myself and I did not really enjoy it. I didn't meet many people. I uh, tried to keep busy. I tried to keep moving. I, I didn't spend too long in one place. It was really challenging. I did not like the feeling of uh, eating in a restaurant alone. I didn't like the feeling of being out in a museum by myself. It felt strange. There was no socialization going on really for me and I got home and I wasn't sure if I wanted to continue solo traveling. It put a, it, it kind of burst my balloon. So I decided to look into cruise ship traveling. Um, I had heard that uh, there were more social opportunities possibly. I booked a cruise and I thought I would give it another try and I flew to Spain and I took a 17-day cruise uh, to the Canary Islands out of Barcelona and it was better it was better it wasn't a hundred percent better it was still kind of lonely eating alone felt kind of funny but on the cruise ship you could ask to be seated with other people and I met lots of other travelers and I heard other travelers story about 50 percent of the time I ate with other people quite often married couples but we would share travel stories and I enjoyed meeting these other people uh, there were some opportunities for dating and socializing on the ship also as a single man in his 60s. I had some interest from some younger women and that was interesting. When I got off the ship, I decided to spend three days in Valencia, Spain. And just kind of fortunate, there was a major festival, the Favela Festival, the first day of spring, March 21st, it celebrated from the 17th to the 21st. And oh my God, what a crazy festival I had really a, for the first time instead of faking it until you make it I think I kind of made it and I reveled in being at that festival walking around the big crowds seeing the fireworks and the you know, parades uh, I just had the time of my life there and uh, enjoyed myself you could rent bicycles and bike on the beach it was a lot of fun and I sort of finally got my mojo and I started to get my confidence and I thought, okay, I can do this. I can travel the world by myself. If you are the type of person who's an extrovert and you enjoy alcohol, you enjoy your beers, uh, you can just show up at any country and belly up to the bar for two or three hours in the evening and kind of chat to the people at the bar next to you. And, uh, you know, it's like a scene from Cheers, the TV show Cheers. 
that really wasn't me. I, I'm good for a beer or two. I just couldn't kill uh, more than 45 minutes at a bar. I just didn't want to sit there and drink and drink and drink. You know, I could be social, I could enjoy a beer, but being alone in a bar has never really been my thing. And I think if you're that type of person who likes to spend two or three hours in a bar in the evening or can sit in Thailand at one of the bars and just sit for three, four hours and make a bunch of chumps, uh, you know, so you'll be fine. Uh, solo travel will be very easy for you because you'll just go from one drinking establishment to the next and you'll make friends and, and uh, like-minded uh, people and you'll get along quite well. The cruise ship offered a better opportunity for me. So I went on a 21-day Panama Canal cruise and I went through this group called the Solo Travelers USA and they had an unbelievable package. A 21-day, last minute, I booked eight days before the departure and uh, I got a a solo cabin. They had about 50 or 60 solo cabins. They had a solo lounge and I got a price of about a thousand dollars for a 21 day cruise and because I booked it through the group I got free gratuities and for 21 days that added up to over four hundred dollars and I got free bar and even though I'm not much of a drinker you know it was free so I decided what the heck I would drink on this trip. I walked on the ship and I decided oh I'll go get a diet soda or I'll go get a uh, something to drink and use my free drink package. I sat down at the bar in the main lobby of the ship and a man my age and a woman about 20 years younger walked in and sat down next to me and they had gone on a cruise three years earlier uh, to the Bahamas or the Caribbean and they had met each other and they, they weren't boyfriend and girlfriend but they'd stayed friends on Facebook and they had kind of coordinated they would take this cruise together uh, just as buddies and they sat down next to me and we became fast friends and for the next 21 days this core group of three of us plus another six or seven people there were about eight or nine of us we had the time of our life and I drank and I danced and I never drank so much alcohol in my whole life I think 21 days of free alcohol and when I got off the ship I had scheduled 21 days in Thailand I had uh, a friend I had met on the cruise ship who lived in Thailand and uh, I went to go visit him and I had the time of my life, uh, Chiang Mai, uh, Phuket, uh, Bangkok, uh, Pattaya, Sin City and I really really started to feel uh, that solo travel was something that I was thriving. It's amazing when you solo travel you go to dinner when you want to go to dinner, you wear what you want to wear, you sleep when you want to sleep, you make all the decisions. There's no waiting for someone to put on their makeup or fuss with their dress. It's much more uh, cost-effective as a solo traveler. I remember pulling into uh, Dublin and uh, just taking the seven dollar euro bus right to a bus stop and it stayed in front of a old hotel. It was clean. It was $50 a night in Dublin right outside the bus stop from the airport. Oh my god you could walk to everything. If I was with a girlfriend she would have complained and been miserable in that hotel. I was quite happy. It was half the price that I would have stayed anywhere else and quite often when you travel by yourself you can get a pod hotel. I was in Singapore traveling solo in one of my two around the world voyages Singapore is crazy expensive but kind of cheap to fly in and out of. Uh, I stayed at a pod hotel for $27 a night. The bathrooms were sparkling clean. It was quiet. Uh, you know, if you can get used to crawling into the pod, you're good to go. You're not taking people out to dinner and buying them $12 and $15 glasses of wine. Uh, it's way more cost effective. And you can see more. You can go when you want to go. You can leave the museum when you're tired of seeing an exhibit. I proceeded to travel around the world uh, circumnavigating the globe twice. I came to the Philippines for a week in February of 2020 and then February 15th I took a cruise around Australia and New Zealand with a girlfriend and uh, that was the second to last week that any cruise ship operated before COVID. But I came to the Philippines alone as part of my around the world trip and I found it to be very very interesting but it was challenging coming to the Philippines by yourself, uh, not having a girlfriend, not having uh, dated anybody online, not having met anybody previously. You know, I, I went to the coffee shops. I, I signaled that I was interested in meeting other expats to chat. I signaled that I was open for conversation. I made eye contact. I, I walked around. I took a couple of excursions. One of the things that I found in uh, Solo traveling is one of the best places, whether you're on a cruise ship or you're on land, 
you book an excursion, that group of people you spend the day with, and like-minded people tend to chat as they're walking down the streets and going from one point to the other before the tour guide speaks, and you might become friends with those people on uh, those excursions. And I made a friend, a younger woman, it wasn't a romantic friendship, but we're still friends today, and uh, we uh, had dinner the next night and we went on a second excursion that we organized just because we were friends with each other and uh, that's the way solo travel can be you can prosper when you travel solo even if it's a little bit lonely at first you have to just fight your way through it you know there are some ways that you can plan to make the most of it one of the best things you can do as a solo traveler is to stay at a hostel uh, hostels are extremely social environments, especially around breakfast time. People are gathering, people are trying to figure out which excursions they're going to, they're trying to figure out their transportation, everybody's sharing their previous day's experiences. And people are uh, joining other groups, they had not even met the people. They're finding out they're going to the same destinations, they're sharing taxis, they're sharing bus information, they're getting on the train together, they're spending the days together. And quite often, a hostel will have a private room with a bathroom. Now, the hostel might be $15 a night or $20 a day, but they're going to have a room, either a private room with a shared bathroom, or they're going to have a private room with its own bathroom. They may only have one in the whole hostel. But as an older man, you don't want to kind of creep out the 20-year-olds and you know be the eighth guy in the bunk bed. And you can't get any sleep in those situations anyway. But you can be in the hostel. People will be welcoming to you. They will treat you just like everybody else. And then in the morning, you get your granola with everybody else. You talk about travel arrangements. You team up with other people, and off you go. Now, in terms of the Philippines, I came to the Philippines in February, and I stayed in Cebu City. It was a little bit more crowded and I've mentioned before it's not my first choice in the Philippines but people point out that the island of Cebu is a great jumping off point you have ferries that'll take you everywhere you can uh, take a day excursion down to Mawal to uh, swim with the whale sharks you can go to the waterfall in southern Cebu uh, there are mountains there's a lot of see the island of Cebu has a lot to offer and if you're willing to fight the hour out of town and the hour back into town traffic wise well once you get to your uh, condo or hotel um, there's a, an enormous amount of single women that speak English from the call centers there's a lot of nice mall activity uh, the mall coffee culture activity uh, at Ayala Mall or the IT uh, parks uh, is pretty good in Cebu but you gotta get in and out of town and the traffic's pretty rough so in terms of traveling solo that experience saved my life. It gave me confidence. It gave me confidence to set out into the world by myself and just have confidence that I could figure it out. I could work through those challenges. I planned a, a major solo trip of 50 plus days, 25 days in South America, Machu Picchu, uh, Patagonia, the glaciers in Patagonia, Argentina, uh, Iguazu Falls, Brazil, and then 21 days on an ocean cruise by myself from Sao Paulo to Belgium. And I really didn't have a plan B for what I was going to do when I got to Belgium. I kind of thought I was going to come back to the Philippines, but I was open. I didn't know. And uh, when I was on that trip, I got online and I've told this story before, but I met my Filipina online within a few days. I had tried this before, not too successfully. Um, I've run into a number of scammers in the previous attempts uh, years earlier. This time, bingo, I don't know what happened. I don't know why my karma changed. I didn't think I deserved to be this lucky, but here I am eight months later, uh, living my best life in the Philippines. I flew from Belgium to the Philippines. I met my Filipina. We had an amazing first meeting in Manila, Makati area. We traveled all over the Philippines, we met her family, and then we settled down in Cagayan de Oro, Philippines, which is a, a city that's kind of the sweet spot for not too far from her family. And I'm living an entirely new existence. I'm engaged to be married. Uh, we live in a house that in America would cost four times as much. Uh, taxis cost us two and three dollars. Meals cost us uh, half or one-third of what they do in America. 
the, the health insurance is reasonable here. I still carry my health insurance back in the West and I am living my best life and it's really because of my solo travel um, journey. That journey of leaving my retirement life behind. I had always dated women my own age. I just wasn't settled back in America. I didn't have the social life that I craved. I wasn't sure what to do with myself in retirement and I didn't have as robust of a retirement income as I had hoped for. And I wasn't sure how to make the most of my retirement years. And rather than sit there on the couch and watch TV, rather than just put up with the high prices, put up with uh, living in isolation as a retired person, I decided to venture out and see the world and travel solo. And I really, really, really enjoyed and looked forward to these around the world excursions, seeing, learning different cultures, studying history, meeting people on planes, trains, and having conversations. And I started to interact with younger women in terms of dating opportunities. I started to socialize with a younger crowd of people at the hostels and I found myself gaining a lot of confidence. And when I returned to America and I started to organize my South American trip and my cruise to Europe and thought about coming to the Philippines, I had watched a lot of people on YouTube who had successfully kind of crossed this semi-permeable membrane, found their way to the other side. There are so many stories about scamming and people being, uh, you know, meeting the wrong uh, woman. Uh, but then there were a lot of stories of people who were successful and uh, it seemed like the dollar would go really really far and after traveling all over the world i thought okay i'm gonna really go there and try it but before i got there i met chrissy online and i've never been happier and i feel like solo traveling is what saved my life now i promised you i'd talk to you a little bit more about tips and hacks so real quick let me just go over some of the best practices for solo traveling. Number one, you know, you want to travel light. The really smart solo travelers, they're gonna, you know, like uh, Rick Steves, who's a famous travel advisor, he travels with a backpack. You want to bring one pair of pants, believe it or not, you know, and I always fly in long pants. You want to fly in laced shoes. I bring a black pair of tennis shoes. So it's really important to have a black pair of tennis shoes because you don't have to bring a second pair of tennis shoes. So you can walk eight, 10 miles in a comfortable pair of tennis shoes that are kind of combination dressy tennis shoes. You can wear them actually with a suit even. You know, you want to wear these worsted wool black t-shirts. They're a little bit expensive. You get them on Amazon for about $50. The branded ones cost about 100. Two or three of those, you wash them in the sink. Uh, you know, you bring uh, black worsted wool t-shirts. You don't, if you're coming to the Philippines, you don't need rain gear at all, really. To be honest with you, it rains all the time. It rains for an hour or two every day during the rainy season. And, you know, most of the time you just jump into a taxi and if you get wet, a little bit wet, it doesn't matter. If, otherwise, you get an umbrella, but nobody really wears rain jackets or jackets. Or, it's a total waste of time. If you do need a jacket, what you do is you get a puffy jacket that squishes up into nothing, and then you get a really, really, really lightweight uh, windbreaker, the kind that is super thin and folds up to nothing. And so you're gonna bring uh, two pairs of shorts, you're gonna bring some underwear, you're gonna bring some socks, one pair of black shoes, one pair of dressier shoes, if you or sandals. If you don't bring, you wanna, if you know you're not gonna be on a cruise ship or anything, just bring a pair of sandals for the pool. It's really important to bring some mosquito repellent. Uh, things like sunscreen and mosquito repellent, if you have to buy them last minute, you'll pay through the nose. It's a really good idea. They have dengue here in uh, Southeast Asia. Make sure when you go to that waterfall that you're covered head to toe in the mosquito repellent. But in terms of traveling solo, booking last minute is one of the best tips. The cruise I mentioned to the Panama Canal, I booked eight days before sailing. The cruise I took in the Canary Islands out of Barcelona, I booked 10 days before sailing, and I got really good airfare too. It's just crazy amazing. Um, hotels, you can sometimes book last minute too. Sometimes the prices will get a little cheaper when they're three or four days out, when they know they have availability. So sometimes last minute hotel bookings and the flexibility to book at the last minute because you don't know where you're going. You have the freedom to go anywhere you want. 
in terms of budgeting, uh, my advice is to um, eat a big breakfast, try and get a hotel where breakfast is included. That's going to save you a lot of money. If you want to go and enjoy a restaurant, I always enjoy doing it at lunch. The restaurant menus and prices will be much less expensive at lunch. And then I never go to restaurants. When traveling alone, I never go out to restaurants for dinner. If I'm at a hostel and they have a kitchen area, I'll sit there with my food. So I, I usually will go to the grocery store or if I'm staying two or three days, I'll do an Airbnb and I'll try and eat healthy. But I just avoid restaurants at night. I don't spend money on uh, too much alcohol. These days I don't drink much. In terms of dating, um, you know, I'm a big proponent of using an online dating platform. Now here in the Philippines, they can be very, very difficult because they're full of people that are not uh, honest and uh, might be uh, juggling five other foreigners. Uh, they don't believe you're ever going to show up and, or maybe they're doing it as a second job, uh, sort of a, a uh, side hustle. Uh, if they're living in the provinces, uh, boy, all they need is internet and uh, they, they get a free membership and uh, you're willing to send them money for load, you're willing to send them $100 once in a while to help out with some emergency. Uh, so it's a side hustle for people that don't have access to real employment. So it was just a challenging environment. But if you use an online platform, you might meet somebody a week in advance or uh, a month in advance and let them know you're coming to town, let them know you're... You know. Now, I was looking to relocate uh, and become an expat. So the idea was to meet somebody in the Philippines, but initially, I did what a lot of people did. Uh, I tried. I went online when I had no concrete plan to actually visit. My thought was, oh, I'm going to wait if I meet somebody. If 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 I meet somebody, if I fall in love, okay, then, you know, after three or four or five six months, I'll plan a trip out to see if it's true. I don't think that's the best way to go about it. But there's a lot of people that fall into that trap because they're still working, they haven't retired yet, and that's they're interested, and that's the only opportunity they have. But the way to do it. And I have another video called the 90 day plan. Check that out. It's a step-by-step -step guide how to plan. It was the confidence to travel solo that kind of broke the ice and that gave me the confidence to think about making this life-changing expat journey. So if you're not ready to pick up and move to the Philippines, make an exploratory journey. Make a trip solo. You don't need a buddy to go with you. You don't need a girl waiting for you when you get off the airplane. You might be better off if you don't have one. Come and explore. You don't have to spend a lot of money. You don't have to move around city, city. You don't have to go see all the excursions. You don't have to visit all the famous places. You can just come out and park yourself for 30 days you could fly to Manila, you could fly to uh, Dumaguete, you could fly to Cebu City, you could come to Cagayan de Oro, and you could just get yourself a place for $25 or $30 a night. Hey, you're single, who cares if it's not the best place? If you meet somebody, you can change hotel rooms, you can get a slightly nicer place for entertaining, but then get acclimated. Find out what it would feel like. See what it's like to go play golf. Go on some scuba trips. Take some boating excursions. Go out to the malls, talk to the girls at the, at the drugstore, talk to the girls at the coffee shops, meet some people, go online in the city that you're hanging out in, see if there's some online dating opportunities. There will be, there's lots of opportunities. But first, you have to get comfortable with the idea of solo travel. To change your life, solo travel is the first step before that adventure will come together for many of you. Eventually, I learned how to make it work for me and, and, and then it changed my life. And I encourage all of you to make a change in your life if your current situation is not one in which you're living your best life. Till next time. Laughter and life in the Philippines.